And you can study the Bible for yourself. When you hear something, you take your Bible, look into it. Thank God for education. Thank God for the benefit of the ability to read and write. That's a blessing, I tell you. A great, great blessing. If you don't know how to read or write and you are less than 60 years old, you still have time. I'm telling you, you still have time to learn it. In fact, if you're less than, say, 70, because from 70 and above, um, I don't know whether you would accept the fact that it is possible, because it is possible. But if you're less than 70, 69, down, you can still learn to read and write. If you study in the Bible, when you were 65 years old, you probably just got married. <laughs> See? In other words, a man of 70 years wasn't taken as an old man in Bible days. Sin has reduced man's lifespan. Wickedness has reduced man's hope of life. The way things are today were not the way God intended them to be. The purely man-made. Most of the things we eat are not good for human beings. But they are the things we love. Can you imagine? Those of you who love chocolates, especially the, the women. Young ladies, you love chocolates, you're in trouble. If you go on with your chocolates, you may not have teeth by the time you're 60. <laughs> See? They just like chocolates, and there's no reason for that. Why do people love things that are destructive? It's amazing. I tell you something. Human things or things that are made by human beings and look attractive have a lot of danger. Why? Because man is under the curse of death. So everything he makes has death in it. So he's never been able to do something that is not dangerous to life. Hallelujah. Okay, tell somebody that's point number one. Yeah, that's point number one. Let me go to point number two. In point number two, I want to challenge you today about your life and ministry as an individual person. What, what kind of life are you living? Is your life meaningful? Are you in the world as a grabber? If you didn't get that, I'll break it down. Are you in the world as a taker? If you didn't get that, I'll break it down. Are you in the world just to collect from others? Or do you think there's something in your life to give? I want to tell you, God has given us what is called the principle of life. All right, 
Can you all breathe in? And when you breathe in, hold your breath. <coughs> Go and stop. Don't breathe out. Just remain there. Do it. Want to go? <laughs> I don't think it will take you long before you cry out to let you go. If you want to live in this world and be healthy, if you don't want to die pretty quick, you have to breathe in and you have to breathe out. You take in oxygen and expel carbon dioxide. The plants have to do the same. They take in carbon dioxide and give oxygen if they want to survive. If you want to leave, you must give and take. You must learn to receive. Some people don't know how to receive. It's a pity because they're not good givers. Every good giver is a good receiver. So learn to give and receive. If in your life you have always been given and you have never been challenged to give, you are in the wrong path. You will not live very long. And what do I mean by you will not live very long? Let me tell you because sometimes people think you're talking about the number of years that you live. A man can be in the world, physically alive, but he's dead. He's dead. He's non-functional in his environment. He's non-functional. Nobody benefits from his presence, from his life. He's just here to help support the plants, to balance out the ecosystem. He's just here. God has put him here just to release oxygen, uh, uh, carbon dioxide for the plants, and to keep threading so there are not too many ants. He'll kill some while he's walking. And eat some of the chickens so there are not too many in the world. Feed on some of the cows. That's just, that, you know, that's, that's, that's the life some people are living. They just keep being fed by others. They are just here to breathe. That's all. Occupying space. God doesn't like it. Maybe you don't even have a home. But some of you, you few of you here, you, you don't know where you're going to lie tonight. There's no place for you to sleep tonight. Because you sleep wherever the night meets you. You don't have a job. You just move. In the daytime, you're moving around. You may beg one or two persons to help you get you some food. Brother, I need food. And I give you a coin or give you something. And then you beg your way through the day and find a spot to sleep. But you believe in Jesus. And somehow, you cannot look at life with hope. I want to tell you, even in that predicament that you think you found yourself in, there is hope. God is not so concerned about the house. God is not so concerned about you getting a car. Is that too hard for God to do? No. It's not an issue with him. What God is concerned about is all of the love that he has put in you. 
What have you done with it? The life he has given to you, the opportunity that he has given to you, what have you done with it? What can you do with it? How much light there is in you? Who can see with it? That's what he's concerned about. That's what he's concerned about. Success is not about money. Success is not about being known in the society. Success is not about having things. It's not about being famous. It's not about having a, book, a, 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 a big job or something. Success is not about being highly educated. Success is the ability to put to work that which has been given to you that others may benefit through your light. That is success. When I talk to pastors, I tell them something. I'm a Christian. I'm already born again. But there's so much revelation given to me in God's word. Why do I preach? Apart from the fact that God has anointed me to communicate it. There's so much that I know in God's word by revelation. And I want someone else to get to find out. I just want the world to know, to find out what I've got to find out. Catch what I've got. Because of such a great life. I experienced tremendous, tremendous joy in my life. Tremendous happiness. Tremendous peace. And I want to pass it on. I want some others to get to know it. I got it in Christ Jesus. This is no religion. This is my everyday experience of God. And I want the whole world to know. So I try to share it with them. And say, hey, get to know this. Life is not about money. When I began to share this, I didn't think about money. You know, I used to go out to preach years ago. I came across the scripture and the Lord said there, he said, the dark places of the earth are filled with the habitations of cruelty. Let not the poor return ashamed, O Lord. And as I read it, tears came out of my eyes. The dark places of the earth are full of the habitations of cruelty. What does it mean by the dark places? He's not talking about where there is no physical light. He's talking about places where the light of God is seen dim. Where it is dark spiritually. Where the gospel is unknown. He says they are full of the habitations of cruelty. There there's wickedness. There there's evil. And he says, let not the poor return ashamed. Let not the oppressed return ashamed. What does that mean? As the poor and oppressed cry to God, the psalmist says, do not let them return ashamed. That means don't let them go back without an answer. And I already found out, life is not about things that you can touch. Everything you will ever need in your life is actually inside you. It's inside. If you will ever live in a house, you will have to live in it from inside you first. If you will ever drive a car, you will drive it from inside you first. Anything you'll ever have, anything you'll ever use, you'll have to see it inside you first. Until you see it inside you, you will never see it outside. So if I can paint that picture for you from God's word and help you see what you have inside you. Anything that God has deposited inside you, if you can catch a glimpse of it, you can have it. It makes no difference where you are. It makes no difference what you presently have. Selfish men give up. I tell people, don't give up. Why do I say don't give up? Only selfish men give up. When you're very selfish, you give up. You feel terrible about yourself and your life. Then you give up. 
Why would you give up? Because you trust in yourself. Anybody who truly trusts in God can't give up. How could you give up on God? He doesn't fail. Listen, if there is a God in heaven, he cannot fail. How could he fail? If he can fail, he's not God. The truth is you don't know him. And you trust in yourself and in your ability. So when your ability failed you, there was where your hope was, so you failed. But trust in the living God, who's greater than you. If you can trust in him, you follow his light. How do you give up then? It's not possible. How can I give up? Give up? How? Why? How? I, I am thankful for what God has shown me. I am thankful for getting to know Jesus. I'm thankful for the salvation that I have in Christ Jesus. Are you hearing me? If you're thankful for it, you will not think much about yourself. You give up because you think about yourself. When you think of what you have and that you have it in abundance, you want to share it. Hey, you that are saying I got no job, you that are saying I have no house, you that are saying I have nobody, I don't know anyone, I have nothing. You that are saying all of that, talk to me. What has God given you? You mean he's given you nothing? Do you have peace in your heart? Do you have some love in you? Do you think God loves you? Are you glad about it? Do you know there are some people who don't even know God loves them? Why don't you go tell them? Why don't you share with them what God has shown you? At least that he loves you. So you wake up and become somebody. Hey, if you have found your home in the streets, become a street preacher. Become an evangelist in that street. Too many people are concerned about money. That's their trouble. That's why anything about money excites them. They're excited about money. And the more they talk about money, the less they get. The Bible says, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And who is wisdom? Jesus. The Bible says he, Jesus, is the embodiment of wisdom. He says wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. With all I get in, get understanding. He didn't say money is the principal thing. Someone says, I want to start business, I need capital. No, what the Bible just told you is wisdom is the capital. That is the principal thing. That's the capital. Your life can be meaningful. Your life can be exciting. You say you are a nurse, that you have a wretched job. You are unhappy. As you wear your white uniform, it's looking old and dirty. You, you feel terrible. You feel you have to change the hospital. You feel the doctors should be sacked. You even feel the sick people shouldn't come to the hospital anymore. Okay, what have you been able to do with the love that God put in your heart? Have you been able to share it? Meanwhile, sick people stink to you. You're in the hospital as a nurse. You are put off by the messy situation of a particular sick person. A patient irritates you and you're a nurse. You should be ashamed of yourself. Not of your job, but of yourself. You should fall on your knees and repent and cry out to God and ask him to forgive you. Because the Bible says, for God so loved the world. Not the world of things. The world of men, people. God so loved people. That he sent, he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish. He so loved people. 
I know whether or not you love people from the way you talk to them. I know if the love of God is in you from the way you talk to, to others, from the language that you choose when you speak. And listen to this, that's what counts with God. Love for people is what counts with God. That's what counts. You can be a great preacher, winning tens of thousands of people all over the world. That is nothing to God. What is something to God? Because it's His power anyway. Hey, come on. When we minister to the sick and they get healed and all these miracles take place, whose power? Is God's power. God is not impressed. When we see a miracle and we rejoice, they say, wow!